Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. How nice to be with you today. And uh, I just want you to know you're so welcome. I got a wonderful note from a lady I was looking at it this morning. And uh, she discovered us at 5 in the morning and um, said she loves the girl talk. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> and I, I kept wondering, you know, with all of our little devices that we look at and, you know, text all the time and we're on the phone, um, I wonder what's happened to girl talk because it's very, very important. We, lead, we ladies really need it. So if we can supply that for you, that's great. Thank you. Thanks so much for that sweet note you sent. And uh, it's going to be a great program. I've mentioned so many times that God sends us the wonderful guests. And you have mentioned it. I think that's the number one comment about this show. And he's done it again, my friends. Uh, today, my guest is Sarah M. She is from Cambodia and survived the killing fields. Uh, I remember this. I know a lot of you do. And uh, her, she has a book, How I Survived the Killing Fields. And when you read this, you cannot imagine survival. And I mean it. Besides being starved half the time and the sickness and the disease. And then she would say quite a few people would just kind of disappear, which meant they had been executed. And uh, it's a story that you need to hear. And also the way that God can take a little girl who was raised as a Buddhist and she was going through this, but she knew there was a God out there. She didn't know his name. It's a wonderful story. I want you to meet her. And I'm going to join Stephanie for some creamy zucchini. I could live forever without meat, and this is really a, a great dish. Uh, we'll put it together. I think you'll want this recipe for sure. But before I join her, let me talk to you a minute. I want to again offer you the Estate Planning Duo. It's this book. And this, uh, you know, just looks like a bunch of papers. But when you go through this, it asks you every question of what you have to list all your policies, everything that you own. And as uh, Joe Pippen, Pippen has often said, you probably own a lot more than you think you do. Um, this could save you so much money when you pass and your family has to deal with it. Or... It could really save you a lot of just worry today. It's, it's one of the most important things we've ever offered is the two of them. And we're offering them to you today for a gift of $25. And it just might be the best bargain you've ever had in your life. You can use the 800 number. And uh, that's for your credit cards and debit cards and other kinds of cards. 1-800-229-0059. And... Um, you can write to us at box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate your mail and uh, that you order these products. Helps helps us to stay on the air. And now I'm over here with Stephanie to have a little girl talk. Yes, it's so nice to get notes and to get messages. Mm -hmm. and Because sometimes e you stand up I here call? and you just don't know. Am I, yeah. am I talking to anybody? You know? Yeah. Well, and the emails, I forward them to you and mm -hmm, Wanda, mm -hmm. and um, it just means a lot. And in this day and age, it means double, triple, because you took the time to do it. Right. And no one has any time. Right. I went to a birthday party Saturday night, and this guy came up to me, and he went to shake my hand. He said, I just wanted to meet the chef. Oh, <laughs> a guy? Yeah. All yeah. right. So that was nice. So, well, that endorsement, you know, we're looking for that show on right? Food Network, so... <laughs> Okay, so I have zucchini that we julienned, okay? Four, four of them. Four, yes, four, four of them. Size. And then we sautéed them a little bit. So I'm going to get them out of here before they get too um And when I first looked sauteed. at this recipe, all you do is add a little chicken and you got your entree. I'd like to say it's healthy because we're using vegetables, but then we're using heavy whipping cream and cream <laughs> cheese. So well, I cannot say that. Maybe. Balance. It's all about balance. Yes, yes. So here's garlic, okay? I'm going to put a little garlic in here. Get that going. I'm going to put some cream cheese in here, and we're going to get that melting. Mm -hmm. And it also has yummy um, Parmesan. And oh, Swiss. And you got shaved Parmesan, which you, it wasn't the right one, but it was so good on my scrambled eggs this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you, you took some of our I cheese. took a little bit of the cheese, and I put anytime, it on my scrambled eggs, anytime. and it was so yummy. Anytime. It was so good. 
Well, you know, I tasted it, and it tastes different. It tastes better. Oh, it tastes better. Better Sh that than shade that. Parmesan tastes better than like. Yeah. I read somewhere that the, um, you know, like the uh, cheese that you buy in the packages mm -hmm. is all grated. Mm -hmm. That it's got something on yeah, it. Yeah, I told it, you. It that, you told me. Yeah, and that keeps it from sticking together. Yeah, so yeah. if you ever want, so you want to get a block a, and you want to shred it yourself. It's good. So good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm melting the cream cheese down. I'm gonna put heavy whipping cream. The mm -hmm. amounts will be on the screen at the end. This was mm -hmm. a whole. This should have been six ounces of cream cheese. It's eight. Okay, but that's because oh. who wants to have two ounces of cream cheese yeah. sitting around? You always have to modify the recipes to suit yourself. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. Now the Parmesan goes in. The Swiss goes on. Mm -hmm. Which you she couldn't find shredded Swiss cheese either, so she got the pieces and she shredded them herself. Do you want this in there? Sure. All right. So dainty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but can't you just see a, a little bit of rotisserie oh chicken in there? Oh my or goodness, this is so good. Although, chicken. just like you said, you could go forever without meat, so. Yes. For yeah, our really. vegetarian friends. Maybe it's because I've lived by myself for so long and it takes more effort to cook meat mm -hmm. than to just Buy a salad together. chicken. Yeah. Okay, this is gonna be so yummy. Mm -hmm. Salt, so salt, pepper, and a little bit of nutmeg. Yes, that's um, that'll be a nice little flavor ad addition. Okay, we didn't have any salt. I forgot to bring it from no. upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. Yes. I've been working. Mm-hmm. Things, things do happen. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna put the zucchini in here. Well, step. Stephanie the was. The cheese goes on top. Yes, this goes the on top. Goes on top. Mm -hmm. uh, was talking about. Um, Let's turn this down a little where bit. Where you go hunt. And yes. You have. Uh, you love that, like your husband, don't you? I'll tell you why I love it because he loves it, and mm -hmm. I love doing stuff with him that he enjoys. Well, you're Would great. I choose to do it if we weren't together? Probably not. Would mm -hmm. I go choose to sit in the woods? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would I choose to go hunt? Probably not. But he enjoys it so thoroughly that I enjoy being with him because he enjoys it so much. Well, let me tell you another little secret. We come to here early in the morning and do what we need to do, and her phone will go ding, 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 ding. And I found out what that is. It's her husband early in the morning sending her a God bless you or something and to have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. That almost made me cry. That's nice. <laughs> He's a keeper. Hey, Brooke, you need to start doing that. See, Brooke's a newlywed. We have yes. to bring her along. Yes. Does Matthew send you morning texts? Yeah. <laughs> so we need to Maybe talk. Maybe you could send him one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to let this cook a lot longer. We're, uh -huh. we're speed cooking. Let me put a little but Swiss that on is, here for you. Um, mm, that's I, I want to so throw good. that out there for all those married folks. Mm -hmm. that, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Oh, my. It's so good. Okay, mm -hmm. I gotta taste it. Mm -hmm. And the the zucchini is still crunchy, and I would do that. I yeah, I was trying. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to mm -hmm. avoid the. Mm. It's cream cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if, if you want it, it's called uh, it's called creamy zucchini. So, uh, so good. That title tells you everything you need to know. Information is coming up on the screen as to how you can get it. And so if you want this one, choose the way you would like to get it and uh, meet my new friend, Sarah. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, Sarah, it's nice to have you here. And um, I read your book, How I Survived the Killing Fields, and you really explained it. Uh, we've all heard of the killing fields in Cambodia, but the way you described it is just incredible. How does something like that happen to a country? How, how does that person get control? Well, the, the the regime, the communist regime, 
uh, control the country. Before they, they came over, they already sneak out the, the, the children, the youth, uh -huh. the, the, the young <coughs> people, and they took them far away from home in the countryside, in the, in the wood, and teach them the new concept. It's the new ideology that um, it, it's all about communism. They, mm -hmm. they, they train them to, to hate, to be angry at the people in, uh, in the current uh, situation. Now, how did they get you into, into the killing fields? They get me when, when they took over the country. Mm -hmm. And as soon as <clears> they came in, the next couple of days, they start to go door to door and demanding people to get out of the house. And I have no way to stay. I want to stay in. No, nobody can nobody stay. Can. How old were you? <clears throat> I was 21. Mm -hmm. I was in college. Mm -hmm. And um, I was away from home because all my family are back in the hometown. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to college by myself. And now, and so you saw diseases, death. Um, how skinny did you get? Do you have any idea how much you weighed when you were just, just bones, really? Just bone and skin. I will probably no more than 80 pounds. And keep going. You had to keep, keep going. Keep going. Uh, now, you were raised a Buddhist, right? Yes. Yeah. And when you got into this awful situation, and it is described in her book, and we're going to put the website up on the screen, and also uh, you go around and speak in churches and so forth, uh, that information uh, can take you there because she can tell her story. You know, it'll take a little more time than what we have here. Um, you would have sleep deprivation and then keep going. And did, did they have you working in the fields? Yes, yes. Uh, we all had to work in the rice field, long hour. Mm -hmm. They woke us up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and they woke us all the way until nighttime. Now, how, how long were you there before uh, they transferred you to the kitchen? That was a good time, wasn't it? <laughs> If there's yes. a good time when you're going on in the killing yeah. fields, yeah. Yeah, it's probably um, very close to a year mm -hmm. when, when I got too sick and I cannot go to the field anymore, they sent me to the infirmary. Mm -hmm. And there, I, I want to get out because the infirmary is not a place to stay. People die They're every day. They're dying there all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> Did you go from the infirmary to the kitchen? I get out from the infirmary, I escape, and then uh, the team leader that used to to know me before, and she took me in, and she she said, "I will give you something to do." And she keep her eyes on me, and she realized I was too sick, so she said, "You need to go to work in the kitchen." And <laughs> there, <laughs> that's where you put on some weight, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I I realized that. That's God's plan uh -huh. because, you know, yeah. nobody had that uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you didn't realize how hungry you were, right, until you had food in front of you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing uh, that, that you or anyone else survived. Now, during this time, try to explain to the viewers, you'd been raised uh, in Buddhism, but you knew there was a big God out there. And you felt like he was watching over you? I felt like he knows what's going on. And um, I just have faith that he, he will help me mm -hmm. because I believe in him. I believe that he exists. And, um, and it wasn't Buddha? No, no, no. <laughs> Somebody no, else. <laughs> yeah. This is from the book that my mom read to me. At that time, I was probably about seven or eight years old. And in this in this story that he read, there was a man who abused a woman and the children, and there was God that saw what happened really? and in that story. God uh -huh. sent the angels to rescue the children and the woman from this man. 
So from this story alone, it, it showed me so clearly. I said, God know everything. Well, that tells you that it's important to read Bible stories to children. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, you know, it's amazing because God knew what was ahead for you. Did you ever feel that you were not going to make it when you were in the killing field? You, you always believed you would get out. I, I always hope because I hope that I will survive. I will go to, my, to find my family. Because mm -hmm. at that time, I still didn't get back home yet. Mm -hmm. I'm still, the, you know, trying to find my way out from, mm -hmm. from this situation. So I always have hope. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what was it that created the change that you finally did get back to your family? Was, was, there, a, was there a new uh, president or a new leader of Cambodia that stopped all the killing? There was uh, the Vietnamese group, the, the communist Vietnamese, that came and kind of uh, chased out the, the, old, the, the communist, the, the mm -hmm. Cambodian communists. And away. it was at that point that you were able to go and look for your family? It's a little bit longer mm -hmm. because the, the group that controlled my, my group, mm -hmm. they pushed us into the wood. So I had to escape from them first. And from the rice fields, you went deeper and deeper into the woods. Why did they do that? Why did they want to push you there? Because they know that somebody's coming, some, something is coming. So they have a sense. So they, they, they kind of get away from, from what is coming. So they took us along with them. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if uh, you've just joined us, I'm talking to Sarah M. And uh, she has written How I Survived the Killing Fields. And uh, she eventually, as you can tell, came to America and uh, went to college. And she has a ministry now. And also you have a health and fitness uh, organization, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I guess your health would mean a whole lot to you after what you've been through. Yeah. And it also tells us the magnificence of the created body, of how you can survive anything like that. It's unbelievable. Now, you said your mom told you to get an education. And even when you were separated, that was always a goal, always a goal. So when you were able to get back to your family, did you, um, did you have any idea that you would come to America then? No. How did that happen? No. When I got back to my family, I was just so happy to found them. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, um, my mom nurtured me back to good health again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I have no idea because I just enjoy the reunion. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. But my mom saw what's coming because the communist uh, Vietnamese that came and took control of our country, uh, we, we just cannot trust anymore because we, right. cannot, we cannot even trust our own people, like mm -hmm. kill our own people. And now the Vietnamese, so my mom had this vision that they have gun and we don't have gun. And I was a single woman. So I was a, a prime, prime suspect to, to be a victim. Mm -hmm. So she said, you need to get out, honey. You need to get out. So you have an amazing mother. <laughs> yeah, yes. <clears throat> so how does a little girl who survived the killing fields get to America? You don't know any English, do you? No. So that was quite a process. Do you think that was almost miraculous that you were able to come? Um, it is almost miraculous. It's quite, a, quite a process. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, but there are a lot of organizations, especially Christian organizations, that went to the border of Cambodia and Thailand, went to the border and received the, the, uh, the people that get out of the country and along with the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And they help us and they have a program to, to sponsor the people from there to the United States. So how old were you when you got here? I was mid-20. 
And uh, you wanted to go to school, right? Yes, yes. So you went to college here in the United States? Yes. Girl, you amaze me. <laughs> you really do. Uh, what did what did you study? Did you have a major in college? Yeah, I majored in mathematics. Really? So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, um, was it a church group that welcomed you when you came? Yes. Okay. At what point did you find out who who God was? How did you find out who Jesus is? When um, when when my mom brought my my family over to Thailand, mm -hmm. and then um, they they stopped register for refugee and they become illegal resident in Thailand. So I could not sponsor them. So I was in so much stress. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was seriously searching for solution, for help to relieve myself from stress. And there, that's my journey to find who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. so it, it through the church that, um, that helped me to understand the concept of the Bible. And that I found out that Jesus uh, gave up his life. Um, to save us. And at that time, I was just so amazed that how Jesus gave his life. And I, I was wondering, I was asking myself, what else do you need from Jesus? What else do you need him to do for you? So that, that's all I wonder. So there's no more question. I, uh, I found Jesus and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. I love stories like this. I really do because I was raised in a Christian home yes. and I've always known who Jesus is and known him about all my life. Uh, but to meet somebody like you proves it. It proves it. You weren't raised that way. You were raised to worship a dead God. And uh, so wh did you end up in New York City or wh where did you? I end up in Connecticut. So Conne in the Northeast? Yeah, yeah. in the Northeast. And was it a church group that helped you? Yeah, and initially I had an uncle, my mom's cousin, who uh, petitioned, who sponsored me. And then he had to move out of the state for a new job. So he handled to the church that, he, that he's a member of. He said, I need to move to take my new job, uh -huh. so please take care of my niece. That's how it, it would work. And I fell into the, the arm of the wonderful Christian woman. It's the woman ministry. They just love me. And I just cannot ask for more. And it, it just amazed me how people can love me that much that I'm now their relative. You're you know, leaving me speechless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, you know, it makes you so thankful for the reality of Jesus, but also for his people. Yeah. that um, this lady could just move in and take someone from another country, another culture, everything. And uh, that love of Jesus is spread abroad in our hearts by His Spirit, by the yes. Holy Spirit. Um, mm -hmm. And then you married over here, right? Yeah. Okay. And, and what, what's your life like now? My life right now, I... Um, I enjoy sharing my story mm -hmm. because in, in my story, there is a message, mm -hmm. a message of hope, message of healing mm -hmm. and forgiveness and message to give people a different perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a, mm -hmm. a, a different perspective, you see everything differently. Mm -hmm. And I hope that it's the positive perspective that I, I share with them. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, they gave up on something and they struggle through so many challenges. Yes, but whoever's watching, you've never struggled like this. <laughs> this is uh, an amazing story that you're alive at all and also that you have clear thoughts. I think some people going through what you went through uh, would end up with some very serious mental issues uh, because of the torture. Uh, you were tortured, let's face it. And... Um, but I, you just can't get away from that. God just chose you, and he, he just wrapped his arms around you. Um, just before we came in, I said, uh, what church do you attend? Because you live in this county. You said Central Christian Church. I said, I was the minister of music there for five years. So 
Uh, we have a real bond there. But I, mm -hmm. I want to thank you so much for telling your story today. And uh, that you, um, I hope you got her website and that uh, she would bring a wonderful message to some of the ladies in your church. You stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Wow, what a, what a story. Um, I would advise you to get the book. Let me again remind you of... Um, what we call our estate planning duo. It'll give you uh, information in the book and also a way to write down everything you have. Everything that you could possibly think of is in that manual that you can uh, work on yourself. I was uh, thinking about the journey that my guest has taken today and uh, the torture. The, if you read it, her book, you'll see how intense it was and the miracle that she survived. And it reminded me of the book of Lamentations. That's the one that follows Jeremiah. And it was when Israel had so absolutely, absolutely forgotten God and he, he let go of them. It's a horrible, it's just, it's just a difficult book because uh, Jeremiah is walking through the streets and there's dead bodies and there's bloated belly children dying and the very best of Israel is gone and he's just tripping over all this. But in the middle of it, he cries out, but indeed, I have this in mind, that indeed the loving kindness of the Lord never ceases for his mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Now, let me ask you, are you going through the most difficult time in your life right now? He's still faithful. That's when Jeremiah sat down and declared that. Indeed, the loving kind of the Lord never ceases, for his mercies are new every morning. And my guest today has certainly been just that illustration, that picture of the faithfulness of God, and he has never changed. He is still faithful. You can count on it. Join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.